Welcome back. This time for our fate episodes, we're finishing up Ferry. So we were at episode six now. Delayed homecoming. Oh, very well. During the next month's visit, Melfira looked more downtrodden than I had ever seen. Oh no. Vern expressed his distress before I could vocalize my own. Holy spools, lady. You look like you've been up all night. You feeling okay? Holy spools. Oh dear. Melfira meekly raised her head, barely affording him a grin. My love, he didn't come back to me. It took me a moment to find a response. Uh-oh. I'm sure. I bet he'll find a way to return next month. Uh-oh. She had already been waiting an eternity for him. What comfort were my words? And yet, she still found the strength to smile. I hope so. I'm so tired of moping around like this. It's getting harder to stay positive. But I'll find a way. For his sake. <laughs> that man. You know, he's so absent-minded. He probably mixed up the date on his ticket. <laughs> there's, there's so many ways this story could go. It could be really depressing. Melfira unrolled the blanket across her lap, checking the backing of her stitching. Hmm. I've poured a lot of love into this design. I hope he likes it. As she vacillated from melancholy to forced cheer and back again, I had to bite my lip for fear my thoughts would spill out. Uh-oh. Oh no, I mean, considering Ferry's story, I, I, I feel it's going to go a certain direction. Because cause for me, it was like, all right, yeah, we're, like, we're making all this stuff for like this guy. When he comes back, she's going to show it to him. It's going to be awesome. It's like, has he been dead for like years or something? Forgetful love. Episode 7. One month passed and still no word from Elfira's beloved. Because maybe these guys don't realize. I, I, I could, it could just be a simple case of like, nah, something happened. We're going to go help him. But it could be a case of we're going to go help him because his ghost is stuck somewhere. I don't know. I don't know. It could go several ways. I'm sure he has his reasons. Like the fact he could be dead. Lyria tried to comfort the young seamstress, but Malfira's smile was noticeably dimmer than before. Yes, you're right. He's not one to take risks or push himself too far. There's nothing to worry about, I'm sure. I, it's that aspect of like, if, if I'm right, Melfira knows. And just the longer this goes on, the more reality is setting in for her sort of thing. Oh no. Her words sounded strained, like she was trying to convince herself. I thought I knew what was happening, but I couldn't bring myself to acknowledge it. Not yet. We were all stuck in awkward silence, so I changed the subject. It, it really could be a case of like, he died years ago, Malfira knows. He died recently, Malfira knows. Like, he was meant to return, but he didn't because he died like three days ago or something like that. Or it could just be something nice, and he, he, ja he actually just needs our help and can't get back. I don't know, I don't know. How did you two meet? It was in this very plaza. He was a bookworm, so he came here to do his reading. I was out catching some sun myself when he found the courage to sit next to me. I turned to greet him, and he shoved a book on embroidery in my face. <laughs> Not the greatest first impression, huh? Eh, have a book. Uh, oh, cheers, mate. Energy returned to her movements. Color returned to her smile. So what did you do? <laughs> You're going to laugh. I told him I already owned the book. His face turned pale as a ghost. But it was cute, seeing him all vulnerable. So I asked his name, and the rest is history. It may sound silly, but it's like that that's kind of how things work when you 
first meet someone you're really, really interested in. It's just something simple like that. Again, with me and Sarah, all she did was just simply ask me when it was the 26th of December what Boxing Day was, because they don't have Boxing Day in um, the United States. They don't have Boxing Day there, so she asked me what it was, because she knew I was British, so, you know, just asked me what it was, and that was it. Uh, literally that. The rest is history. From then on, we spoke for like three weeks, and things just developed from there. She shut her eyes, savoring the nostalgia. Then she sighed. <laughs> Guess I'll have to go to Dolly and drag him home myself, won't I? We'll do that for you? No, not that. I couldn't let her go to Dolly alone. After witnessing her optimism return, I couldn't let her learn the truth. Oh. Oh no. It's gonna be what I suspect. I just don't know when it happens. Searching for happiness! It's an exploring one! Let's change up the party and get in Cagliostro. Cut it without me, could you? No, I couldn't cut it without you. No, you should stay here. We'll go for you. Dolly can be a dangerous place, and I'm sure your partner wouldn't want anything to happen to you. I hoped that logic would be enough. Dolly? Dangerous? But so many people live there. Hmm. But if a sky-faring crew is offering their services, who am I to deny professionals? Vern scrunched his face in confusion. Lots of people? What are you talking about? Dolly's basically a giant sand- Oh dear. Oh no. This may even go a different direction. A quick nudge was enough to interrupt Vern. I hoped Malfira had missed the majority of his comment. You can trust us. We handle this kind of assignment all the time. We'll be back before you know it. I, d I think the truth is even worse than I suspect. Okay, let's do it. My air of confidence, false though it was, seemed to bring her welcome relief. Could you take the blanket with you? I wanted to give it to him myself, but I know he's probably already spent weeks freezing at night. And it won't do me any good here. She pushed a soft bundle into my hands. It was warm to the touch, thanks to the silk from Fondom, but it was also warm to the soul, thanks to the love and care that Malfira put into every stitch. I'm suspecting we're gonna go to Dali, then come back and she's not here. Of course, it would be my pleasure. Is she the ghost? Could be. Everyone, to the fight! According to Malfira's map, the excavation was near the central ruins. Are you sure you want to trust that dusty old thing? Point taken. But we can at least get a sense for the lay of the land. Now let's go. This place Infinite is crawling wonder. with monsters. Stay on your toes, everyone. Clean this place up so we can start our search. You don't scare us. It's go time. Show no mercy. Go down. Test your mettle. You great work. You're the best. Now, the Yee! fun begins. Got him. Fantastic. The end is nigh. Get rid of these guys now. Have a taste of truth. Hey, hey. It doesn't look like anything's here. Maybe we'll find something back at the western campsite. It's worth a look. Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll have a gander. Yeah. Yeah, take that, Pots. Look at the size of the potion she's got. That's got to be heavy, right? Do these guys get paid to fight us or what? Who's my next victim? Making this difficult. Moving on. I'm starting to get restless. Come on, let's hurry. Level up -o! This place feels right somehow. Oh, no. The grave. I think I saw someone over there! Let's go! Is it gonna be her grave, though? Oh, no. Where'd he go? Where'd that dude from before go? I think I know. I, 
I, it, it's hard to judge. Like, they could both be ghosts. I don't know. No, it can't be. I'm afraid so. He's no longer with us, but we've at least found his resting place. That's some comfort. Didn't even say quest complete. What? No! That's impossible! We all stood before a grave, created 15 years ago in the wake of a terrible calamity. Carved on the back were the names of the deceased. I mean, there you go, 15 years ago. And there, in the middle of them all, was the name of Malfira's beloved. I wrapped the blanket around the stone, tying it securely so the harsh desert environs wouldn't steal it, like it stole the lives of these scholars. Maybe it would at least keep their memory warm. Malfira put her heart and soul into this blanket. Take care of it, okay? Oh no. Alright, so what happens when we go back to Seed Hollow? Yes. Can I help and speak you? to Malfira. Where are you? Ready? Two to go. Now she can rest. There you go. That's what it's going to be. When I returned to Seed Hollow, Malfira's voice was shaky. Huh. Is he okay? I couldn't face her as I struggled out a response. He's... fine. He said the survey was taking longer than expected. That it's going to be a while before he can join you. Oh, thank goodness. I was starting to fear the worst. She was relieved. I was crushed. But how could I bring myself to tell her the truth? I mean, I, 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 tell her. Just tell her. Just feels wrong not to. I mean, it'll be hard. It'll be horrible. But tell her. He said, thanks for the blanket, that he'll never feel cold again. Of course he won't. We made sure of that by retrieving the silk from Fondom. Malfira's joy was contagious, but I still had to force myself to smile. I'm not sure if my act was convincing, but I knew, more than anything, that I didn't want to show her how sad I truly was. When her own grin softened, I knew my ruse had failed. If anything, my glaring lies had only cast a light on the truth she buried deep in her mind. Oh, there we go. Oh, I can't thank you enough for delivering the blanket. I knew I couldn't rest until it was safely in his arms. It clicked. Malfira knew what she was. She knew what I was. Hearing the sorrow evaporate entirely from her voice confirmed it. Okay, there we go. My mind was just jumping backwards and forwards as to what was going on here. But now nothing bound her to the world, and she began to fade, like mist in the morning light. I watched, tears in my eyes, as the contours of her form blurred into abstraction. Somewhere deep down, I knew I had died. It was the day he left for Dolly. I'm not sure what happened. But I just had to wait for him, hoping he would come sit next to me one more time. I've held on to that hope for what seems like an eternity. Malfira, I'm sorry. I feel like I lied to you. I mean, no, you, you've helped her move on. Oh, hush now. I bent the truth too, didn't I? I was glad for your company. Happy to have someone to chat with. Malfira brought her hands to her chest and looked up to the infinite blue stretching above us. <sighs> Do you think he liked the blanket? Do you think he's warm now? He was overjoyed. You found the best thread, stitched away in the sun, and poured your love into it. How could he not be? Oh, indeed. She smiled her last to me, more genuine and placid than ever before. Before we went to Dolly, I wanted to confirm my suspicions about Malfira. I checked with an airship engineer about airbuses to the desert. Dolly? 
No line has been out that way for about 15 years now, on account of what happened and all. He explained that the last ship to Dolly was filled with scholars and their families, leaving on a journey from which they'd never return. But 15 years. She'd been waiting 15 years to deliver her gift. I knew her isolation. I wouldn't let her wait any longer. I, I really like where this went. It's sad, but at least some peace was given to these souls that are stuck, essentially. Memory among the dunes. Before I was ready to part ways with Malfira for good, I decided I needed to build a new grave for her and her beloved in Dolly. I like it. I realized that she had been right. With both sand and chill nipping at your skin, the desert nights really were cold and unfriendly. Wrapping the blanket around the new gravestone, I looked up at the full moon and saw two shooting stars falling through the night sky like tears down a cheek. And I knew, despite the chill, this was the perfect resting place. I turned to my pets. It's okay now. They'll never be apart again. Indeed. That's what I like. That's what I like. Hand-drawn map. Oh. All right, then. All right, so that's Fetty's story done. Again, a very sad ending. But there's some happiness there. It's that idea that, yeah, not only her, but her husband can rest. It's nice. It's nice. But anyway, that's us done with Ferry's Fate episodes. In the next part, we'll be looking at all of Namaya's. Again, I'll find out what the pronunciation is in the next part. So we'll see you over there. Ta-da for now.